All right, guys, um, here we are. I just took the frame sections that were still on this F1 cross member. Um, I took them off, took all the rivets off, then straightened everything. Uh, I really didn't need to straighten it because I'm cutting half of it off anyway. But first things first, what I gotta do is cut the ends off, cut it to length. Uh, because where this fits in the Model A frame, um, where I'm going to fit it in is around 29 and a half, uh, inside to inside frame rail. And we got, what was it? I think three and five eighths. Yeah. Three and five eighths. Uh, yeah. Yes. Three and five eighths, uh, inside the C channel of the, uh, model A frame. So. What I did here, I hope I can explain it. Um, actually, I don't need the Sharpie to be out. Pointer. Here's a good pointer. Okay, so here's what I did. Uh, I made a line first. The 21, uh, 29 and a half. So from this line here to this line here should be 29 and a half. I honestly didn't even measure it. I just did calculations and subtracted from each side. Come on, come on, come on. Let's see. Okay, that's on that line. There it is. Twenty and a half. So, did my maths right. So, if you guys are doing the same thing um, from the edge here on the top. Stand it up. Okay, so it's like that. The edge here to my line, inch and five eighths. Inch and five eighths. And that should give you 29 and a half end to end. You can cut it straight off and weld tabs on it um, and then drill holes in your frame. But I'm kind of trying to make it all one piece. So after I have my line of where the inside of the frame rail is, I added some material, an inch. And I said the inside of the frame was three and five eighths. So I measured down three and five eighths, which is that line here, this bottom big line. But I went up a little bit and down a little bit because I don't want this tab like a slip fit into the frame. It doesn't need to be. This to here has to be a slip fit. So that's where I want to, that's where I want the three and five eighths to be three and five eighths from there, from the top to this line here. Cause I have to cut into here. Remember the, uh, the C channel here. Well, it's going to be like this. So it's going to slide in. So I need to cut this much off of the bottom here. So that can, you know, slide in. And then that this little tab here will get bent up and be against the inside of the frame. I don't know how well I explained that, but that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to cut around this little tab shape that I drew out around the corners and uh, drill a couple holes, bend it up. And when it slips into the frame, I'll be able to bolt it to the inside of the frame. Um, I'll drill another hole on top here, bolt it to the top. I might even rivet it like it, like it is uh, in an F1, kind of make it look, you know, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure yet. And the bottom, I don't know, I think for now, I'm just going to cut here and leave this whole bottom flange here just because I'm going to bend it up and in and kind of rework it. Um, so yeah, so for now, I'll cut this, get this out of the way. Um, yeah, I don't know, actually. <laughs> 
don't know how I'm going to do it yet. Because this stuff's going to be out of the... I'm just trying to think of how... Yeah, you know, again, I did this again. I got like 80% of what I needed to do, and then I turned the camera on, and then I didn't figure out the last part of what I needed to do. So, actually, no, I do, I understand. Uh, so, sorry about that. For the bottom here, it's not, I'm not really going to touch it yet. Um, I'm just going to come in after this is cut down here. This whole tab and stuff is going to be out of the way. And then I'm going to do a cut on the bottom side of this line. And probably another one directly under it. Just to open it up a little bit more. Uh, so the bottom of the C-channel of the frame can slip in it. This stuff can still be here. So I can figure out what I'm doing with that later on. Um, so I don't have to like cut too much and then I got to add material. I, I want to just kind of do step by step. You know how I do things. I don't like to go too far ahead of myself and then have to backtrack. So this allows me to hopefully to slip it into the frame and then figure out where I want to go after that. Um, I don't know if I want to keep all this material and keep it thick. Some guys, most guys actually kind of cut from down here and cut up and like, you know, make it look like it's the same thickness all the way around just because it's a lot bulkier than the Model A frame as you can tell. Model A frame is this big. So this will be hanging down the bottom. Um, I don't know. I'm, I plan on running full fenders on this car anyway. And the extra meat probably not going to hurt anything. So I'm probably just going to leave it. I don't know. Maybe box it off on this side so it's not like funky. I don't know. Like I said, I'll, I'll get it in there and then I'll figure out what I want to do. Um, I might end up just cutting it, making it look all the same length. Uh, width around, I mean. Because, I don't know, this, I, just, I just do that. But who knows? Same thing on the other side, obviously. So let's cut this up and we can go from there. guys here it is uh, the modified for now uh, F1 cross member this you can put it in like this uh, you could only go through this step and put it in like this and it'll probably be fine make a uh, make a spacer block here spacer block here maybe put some uh, I don't know one by two or two by one, whatever, square stock. Because the frame ends here. There's this much space in between. Uh, so you could probably, you know, just add a spacer in there if you needed to. Uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something with it. I'm not sure yet, but I just wanted to show you guys before I put it in there um, that these were the modifications. It was cut. I bent that flange over, so that's one piece. I didn't need to weld anything on uh, to do that. You saw me just do it right in the vise. Nothing, nothing crazy here. Um, you know, simple, simple stuff. Uh, so 
Now this, see how I cut there? That, if you didn't understand before, that is where the C channel will go in there and this part right here will slip into the inside of the frame. Um, it's really simple. The, the part where it gets confusing and uh, skill level goes up is when you wanna modify this uh, to make it look better. But in all reality, you don't, you don't have to. Um, like I said, you could, you could cut this fully off now at here because this is the end add I don't know maybe an eighth of an inch that's the at uh, the end of the frame uh, so you can cut that off right there and like I said add a spacer block or something drill some new holes and you know tighten the thing up there um, and it'll be fine but let's uh, let's throw this in there and uh, see how see how she fits All right, so here it is in. Um, it's nice and tight. It's not too tight where you gotta smash it in, uh, but it just took a couple hits with a dead blow and it got right in place and there's, there's no movement w when it's in, so that means I did my measuring correctly. Um, what else? I'll show you, I'll get back, I'll get under it and show you the uh, the cuts I was talking about. And also this here. So this, uh, you can cut this off right there at the end of the frame. And you could add a block here, drill some new holes at the bottom, going through totally all the way through the frame and you could just sandwich this together and Bob Gironti, you're all set. Um, what I think I wanna do, I might weld a piece that goes here. So I'll weld it to here, just the width of this bottom of the frame here then go out, I don't know, three inches or so. I don't need to be all the way out to here. Probably do it to here. And then flap this metal up so it's flush. And then weld it here. So it kind of, that's hard to explain. Um, if you get it, you understand. But, uh, well, obviously that's a stupid thing to say. But it's uh, essentially boxing it in and giving a place, I'll be able to put a couple of bolt holes uh, coming in from the inside of the frame down into that little flange that I just made and that would be boxed in using most of the, uh, the old material, hopefully, if I can. But again, here's that cut I made that went in inboard, so this would slip into it. Um, there's my flange there that I bent over. Um, same thing, this is easier to see on the side, it's not as dark. So you see the flange there and the cut where the C-channel slid into. Um, I'm not too sure if the pedals will bolt up. Well, they're gonna bolt on this side, but looks like they will and they shouldn't hit the hit this. But I'm just wondering, I might have to bend the pedals over because it might be a little too close to the, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put both of them on and see how, see how they feel. And I'm not sure exactly forward or backwards, how much forward or backwards, backwards this needs to go. I kind of put it where i kind of guessing here, uh, but also not guessing. I went on the ham and uh, looked up placement on a bunch of these and I would always see this hole here and it was pretty much right after it. Um, and I have wiggle room here uh, with the, the width I made it. 
uh, I can probably knock it forward and back, I don't know, about four or five inches. Maybe four inches, not maybe not five, but probably around four inches of uh, movement I have. And I'm pretty sure here is exactly where it needs to go. Um, from remembering where I put my K member from last time. So. It should be all good. Um, I'll kind of get back on this one I can. I gotta go inside, it's kind of late. I've been working on this a lot. Got the bed on, obviously, you probably saw that. I didn't film me putting it on because was, I was just too excited. I got the sills in and uh, I still need, I don't know if you guys know, but you see these rivets here. Uh, this is part of a bracket that holds the sill to the frame because right now this bolt that goes through only goes through the sill and there's another bolt here but most of it's hanging off uh it's 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 weird how these bolt on um and somebody cut off my brackets from either side so this was a bracket that was riveted on uh but obviously it's no longer it's uh you know and nobody has them in stock the person who makes them obviously isn't making them fast enough for everybody like everything else like the wood sills themselves so you know but so uh, with me not having that bracket I had to just c-clamp the sill to the frame for now it's like that on both sides because I could only attach the sill and the bed to the frame by this bolt here and it's directly in the middle of the bed and it's just it doesn't do enough like if I had weight on the back of the bed it kind of start tipping over so I, that's why I have everything in the front and I have the C clamps there it just saves space when I have it on it was taking up a bunch of space right here and you know I can store everything inside of the truck now but that's how we're looking I'll be back on it soon Alrighty, so um, I took this outside because I I hit it quick with this little uh, three-inch angle grinder, and the shot got full of dust, rust dust. Um, so I figured I'd take it outside, and I'd use this. As you can see, something happened. Um, these discs, it's like a 24 grit, works really good at removing rust. And I took the handle off of it because I flipped it over uh, this way. I flipped it over this way and I was trying to get in here with it to kind of get this stuff off. Because with the handle on the left side, you know, it just wouldn't work out. So, you know, I took it off. I was trying to go easy, you know, and then it must have hit this edge there or something and it whipped around got me pants and a little bit of my leg too this one just a little scratch but look at that what do you know and of course every time i hurt myself i'm never rolling the camera's never on it's kind of funny maybe because I'm always like, oh, I'm going to do this quick, off camera, whatever. It'll take two seconds. And that's the time where I hurt myself. Uh, so, yeah. So I'm going to need a new set of pants. But, you know, is what it is. So I went crazy taking the rust off the front. And then I flipped it over and hurt myself. So I'm not going to take the rust out of the back. Probably just going to send it to the blasters after I do my modifications on this. Uh, but... 
I test fitted, I tried to test fit the, uh, the brakes, the pedal assembly and all that stuff. It is too far, it's too close to the frame rail. Um, part of it would fit in the frame rail and it would work, but I just couldn't get the holes mounted because it, it would hit the inside of the frame. So I need to move everything over. I think I'm going to move it down and over. Um, I'll put it back in and figure that out. But right now I'm going to weld up all these holes on this side because these don't get used at all. Probably going to leave this hole here, a uh, speed hole. And this one, I'm going to weld all of them. And fill that hole. Oops. Come on. And fill the hole because I need to re drill that hole and it's just going to be a mess. So I'd rather just weld the whole thing shut and then drill a new hole rather than drill a new hole and kind of try to fix a half moon hole. It's not worth it. So just drill it first. I mean, weld it first, then drill it. Uh, so I'm going to fix up all these holes, all these holes minus this one, and then we'll mock it up again, uh, clamp the pedals in place where we want it to live, and then mark those holes, drill them out, Bob your auntie. Um, and then I think I'm going to go and cut this section out and beat this bottom here until, it, until this flange here or close to it meets up to the bottom. If it meets up to the bottom nicely and I can bolt it in, um, then I'll do that. If it's too short and it won't make it, then I'll have to weld on a piece and we'll figure that out. But I think I'll have enough. So when we beat it up, we'll be able to bolt it into the frame. So I want this to be a removable cross member. I don't know why, it just kind of makes it easier. Um, then having something permanent, if it gets in the way, take the bolts out, uh, take it out. And no harm, no foul. So, let me get welding.
Shepard, what are you doing? Are you working? Yeah. Shepard, you working? Good job. Let me see. What else are you doing? You fixing? Yeah. Show me. Good job. Be careful. Watch out for your hand. Now a tire? You fixing the tire now? Tire. Oh, don't fix that tire. That one's all set. Tire. You can fix this one. This is mine. All right, so you saw me and Shepard running around doing some things. Uh, didn't get too much done, but there was these brackets that you might have seen me drilling out. Um, I bolted them in. They were riveted. Uh, I feel like for ease of taking the bed on and off and stuff, I, I don't know. For now, it's getting bolted. 
Um, and then I sent the bolts down there and the other one right there, grade eight. So the bed is finally locked into place and I don't need to hold C-clamps on uh, the frame from the sills to the frame. It's, it's on there, ain't going anywhere. So I just need to either make or buy the front panel for the bed because right now it's just kind of the back of the cab and I don't want stuff smashing the back of the cab or falling through the front. So got to get that piece. Um, not too much done here. I saw Sheppy working on the front end a little bit. He didn't do, he didn't get much done. I got to tell you, looks like he's doing a lot. Um, so I've actually been messing around with the motor that I'm putting in it. Uh, it's just a uh, 59AB, nothing really too special, not relieved, nothing like that. I'm pretty sure it's just going to have stock heads on it. Um, but I think I want to do some kind of 2x2 two two or something. I'm not sure if I'm going to go with Offenhauser or the Fenton. Because right now it's pretty much all I got other than the... Because the Sharp doesn't have generator mount and that hexagon tool over there, um, it fits a stock generator, which is cool, uh, but the carbs are turned backwards and I'm not sure on the linkage. I might try and figure it out and put it on here because that would be kind of cool. Um, but other than that, I put the, let's see, I put the cam in. so. My friend Joe has given me a lot of stuff uh, for this motor, for, like the motor and everything on it, besides the my speed stuff. Um, but I had to find some things, like I had this in the back, which is nice, because I need it. Um, didn't come with that. Um, he gave me a cam, but it had the original composite gear on it, and it was... You know, it's it's worn pretty bad, so I luckily I had another cam uh, that was a bolt-on gear style, and I have a bunch of these aluminum gears uh, in the back, so put that in with the aluminum gear with the cover to match, so all that is sealed up. I uh, just need some gaskets and stuff. I have a two-bolt distributor. I got water pumps, I got all that stuff. Um, just need a few more head studs or bolts, whichever way I want to go. Um, and it's pretty much ready to rock. Um, just need to put the valve train in it. The valve train is missing, but I have it. He gave it to me because um, he had a special valve train set up that he was going to use in his, and he put it in this. It's kind of complicated, but he took the valve train out of here but I have it. He's gonna help me put it back in. And then I just gotta bolt one of my transmissions up to it. And then I can put the front motor mounts in and stuff like that and kind of get the motor and trans sit, sitting in here. Um, Cause, and I do need to, I don't know why it's taking me so long to finish this F1 cross motor, probably because I've got no time to work on it, but I got it to the point now where the pedals are bolted up. Uh, I just didn't drill the hole for the master because it's a bigger hole than just like a drill bit. Um, I got to get a hole saw and saw it out. Um, what else? This end this is the only thing I haven't messed with is the ends. Um, I got the flange here like I showed before. So it bolts up to the side, and I just have to cut up in here, make it kind of flow, and uh, transition everything, and probably put another flange uh, touching this side. I was going to do on the bottom, but then this, this slit here has to be, I don't know, then it kind of slips over the frame, and... And it gets tight in some places and it's just kind of annoying. So I'd, I'd want it 
totally to sit inside the frame rail instead of half in and like half on the bottom. So I just gotta cut it so it fits there, uh, weld it back together. But essentially the cross member is like done. That's gonna take a few minutes to do. Um, but I'll cover, I will cover that in probably the next video of the Roadster pickup. But for now, that's kind of what's going on. Slow progress, cause this is kind of on the back burner, but you know, it's mostly, mostly bolt on stuff. So things look like it's going quicker than this. But once it comes down to uh, like, I have to do some gapping on the body. Actually, this door's kind of good, but that door doesn't fit so well. And the back here still needs to be kind of moved around and set into place. Cause it's just still just sitting here. Um, there's, that's going to take some time, but oh, I did do something else. When I put the bottom cowl on, um, this side was like, as you can see, it's perfect fit. Fits super nice. This side wasn't so great. The back end here popped out like literally to here. So it's a huge gap. Uh, the front wasn't great. And this, the gap along here was, it was horrendous. So that's kind of how it was where the holes lined up and I put it in just cause I didn't have too much time. Um, one day when my buddy was here, um, I actually drilled new holes. You can even see the filings from the drill. Um, but I drilled new holes where this sat nicely as it does now. And now the, the, uh, it's not as good as the other side, but it's, you know, it's a lot better than it was. So I'm kind of just going to leave it like that. It's just, it's just an old jalopy truck. So it's not, it doesn't have to be concourse quality. So I'm not going crazy on anything. There's no, there's no rot on the vehicle. So I'm not like, it doesn't matter. Someone could always go back in later and do the fine tuning stuff if they really wanted this car to this truck to be something special, but it's, it's really not. So, you know, it's coming, it's coming. I just can't wait to get the uh, C Chevy seat in there. It's his car, it's his car. So, um, yeah, pedals line up nice. There's room for the, uh, the column. Once I get that in there, um, I didn't go into huge great detail on how I put that in but it, I literally just moved it over a little bit so there's so this hole just misses um, I might trim it I don't know I might just leave it so in case I need to put this in something else and I don't use it in this you know I don't ruin it but I've seen it so that this this hole was right at the top here and the master still fit in so I'm confident that'll fit in and I actually have masters sitting around I should just test one but I'm confident it'll fit so hopefully next time I'll be setting the motor and trans in this thing um, yeah get taking the old motor mount blocks out and setting everything into place probably tack welding the motor mounts in place there and then it'll really start looking like something once a motor and trans in there but all right guys that's it for this one hope you guys enjoyed there wasn't too much of shepherd running around having fun playing with the hammers and stuff but i can only take them out here so much and it's getting cold out and you know he doesn't like the cold when he's in here he kind of wants to leave when it's too cold so but I appreciate you guys watching. Um, stay tuned. There'll be more on this. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.